yeah, the, one of the stories I really wanted to talk about tonight is um, uh, Suga meets with the fisheries rep over wastewater. So yeah, there's uh, as you all know, there, there is an interesting situation happening since 2011 that uh, with, of course, the Fukushima nuclear reactor having melted down, you know, the, um, the rods and everything have melted. I, I don't and I don't understand this very well. But what I understand is that the uh, reactor core, however, you know, if they ever if it went dry, and this is one of the scenarios that was being debated for months after the accident, it wasn't clear whether the reactor was actually exposed to the air and whether there was actually, um, you know, plutonium being atomized and being carried up in the air like a, like an A-bomb explosion, basically, like nuclear fallout. If there was a question whether there was actually fallout material falling over Tokyo. And this was the scenario that um, would be the scenario that I would have cancer or Tokyo would be evacuated by now, that people believe. And this is a scenario that the U.S. military... Uh, and U.S. government actually said that they thought was happening. It's the scenario that a lot of anti-nuclear activists um, went onto media and said they assume is happening, uh, which contradict the, the information, which, thank heavens, that the pool wasn't dry. Um, the, the pool that was cooling the reactor rods in Fukushima actually did have water and continues to have water. And uh, in order, again, to stop... Uh, as as they decommission the plant, you know, they still have to keep the nuclear material cool, and so they have been pumping coolant through the plant uh, even following the accident, basically since 2011. However, given that the whole plant was sort of uh, broken um, and, and it wasn't clear what was going on inside the reactor for such a long time, they made the decision that where a normal nuclear plant, you would run basically, the, the reason they're always beside the ocean is that they use seawater for this purpose. They, they capture seawater, they pump it through uh, basically around the reactor to keep it cool. Uh, not through the plutonium per se, or maybe they do, but they do something with it that basically it'll have some tritium in it, it'll have some um, short short half-life radioactive material in it, but they'll treat it um, and uh, dilute it enough that it can basically, on a normal nuclear reactor, it will be basically sent back out into the ocean, you know, in front of the nuclear reactor. And by the way, I have surfed before the accident, obviously. I've surfed right beside the Fukushima nuclear reactor, best surfing of my entire life was right beside that nuclear reactor actually um, in Fukushima. It's got amazing surfing, beautiful beaches. Um, obviously not very good for it now. But the point is, is that, you know, Japan's whole coastline and America and Europe have coastlines dotted with these nuclear plants that are constantly sucking up seawater, using it for cooling and putting it back out into the sea, you know, in constant operation. With Fukushima, they didn't actually know if it was safe um, or, or what was going on with the plant. So they made this decision that they would suck up all of this water, but rather than pump it back out like they normally would, you know, they weren't sure if it was safe, they decided to keep it all in these barrels on site. So basically, some, what's normally an ongoing pumping in and out process around these plants, they decided to store on the Fukushima site. And so basically, you have now, you know, and these are vast amounts of water, have been going around, you know, sort of keeping the, rea the reactor core cool now for um, 10 years. And uh, but instead of pumping it back out to the sea, they've been putting it into these tanks and these, basically there's no room left on the site and uh, the tanks themselves are starting to sort of break and so on. And um, yeah, yeah, the, the Japanese government, it's been a problem for a long time. Like, what are you going to do? You can't just keep storing this stuff forever. You know, you actually have to figure out what to do with it at some point. Uh, so the Japanese government has been sort of agonizing over what to do with this, aware of the, um, you know, the, the damage in terms of image and reputation taken to Fukushima food and fish. And by the way, if you live in Tokyo, frankly, anywhere in Honshu or whatever, and you go to a restaurant or you eat in a cafeteria, um, you know, if, if you're eating vegetables, that all vegetables and food sold from Fukushima in Japan are all tested and they're proven safe. But of course, if you put Fukushima on the label, um, you're not going to be able to sell it in a supermarket. However, they do sell those foods. And Fukushima was like the Texas of Japan. It was the bread basket. So uh, that food is still being sold. Uh, you know, it's all tested and safe. Um, and it's being sold in wholesale markets, which are being used in school cafeterias and uh, restaurants and so on. And if you eat out in Japan, no question, you've eaten Fukushima food. Um, but of course, the image of putting Fukushima on the label of anything edible, fish or whatever, you know, has been this thing. And of course, countries like Korea, I, I think, still prohibit um, imports of uh, fish and seafood from Fukushima. Even, even if you test the food and prove that it's safe, it's like, no, we don't trust you. We're not allowing anything. 
and it's even within Japan you can't really sell it nobody wants to buy that so to overcome the reputational issues taking a really really long time and now that the government's basically there they've got this water problem that they and they've come to the conclusion the only thing that they can do is release it out into the ocean uh, all of the stored up water um, now as I, I am not knowledgeable about this but what I understand is is that the IAEA uh, uses standards for the amount of tritium the amount of uh, radioactive sort of uh, byproduct in the, the resulting treated water and how much is safe to release uh, however this is how much that's safe to release on the normal ongoing pump in pump out basis not on um, storing it for 10 years and releasing it all at once that's kind of a different sort of thing but they do have what they deem to be no effect on the, a standard that represents no effect on the environment which is what no, most nuclear power plants have uh, the government's just sort of come to the point where all of this stuff is sort of just sitting on site and it's starting to the the, the bar, you know the tanks are starting to crack they're running out of room and they have to release this stuff um, and so the government took a decision this week right before the olympics of all times as well to um that they're going to have no choice they, they're going to have to start releasing the stored up water on site into the ocean and they've, they've been emphatic that the, the water itself has been treated and it actually does meet the iaea standards for basically should have no effect on, on the environmental health um, it's super diluted it's the same as what goes out of any nuclear power plant of course the big difference is well two two things one is that there's there's a lot of it and that's been stored 10 years worth of the stuff that they're proposing releasing at once that's not sort of normal so it's quite you know you've got the question are they using the right standards and the other thing of course is just the general you know do, do you trust the man um you know can this be relied upon and 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 of course you know as as we've learned up and down um when you say anything about uh anything nuclear related um the 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 mistrust and hysteria that immediately goes uh the the not there are a lot of people already of course freaking out japan is about to release and they say uh, japan's about to release um radioactive water you know into the pacific ocean and they're about to poison the whole pacific some people are sort of saying now you know the water from my perspective um i love surfing in ibaraki which is down current from fukushima i'm not planning to surf in fukushima again but if i want to ever go surfing or fishing in fukushima i eat food from fukushima i eat fish from fukushima I know that this happens if I eat out uh, and I want to go surfing in Ibaraki again so you know uh, to me this is not a propaganda you know war this is this is uh, again personal safety um, that, that I, I'm interested in this and I want to understand is it, is it something I should reconsider surfing in Ibaraki after they do this um, so what actually how safe is the water what is actually in it does it contain plutonium does it contain tritium how much is safe what is safe what is the normal standard and truth is i don't know there's all there's all the government of japan has a lot to explain uh if history is any indicator um frankly there's going to be some, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be shouting very loud and they're not going to be listening to anything uh, because they just have an agenda of proving that nuclear power is evil and that uh you know and, and that if, you know the world's going to end all over again like they said back in 2011 um and we're proven on a, a lot of things to be wrong but that said um you know um what what i want uh, as uh, having just uh uh sort of um given the bbc a hard time for being a public broadcaster i i, I do want to know um what's the equation here how safe is this what is the risk they're already talking about paying they, they know it's going to cause a uh, more problems for the fishing industry and they're talking about paying compensation to them because they know it's going to be harder to sell their fish but it's not just fukushima it's, it's going to affect the whole you know, pacific coast of japan so we're waiting for more information on this it's it's interesting that they're planning to do this ahead of the olympics particularly with countries like my own country new zealand which is completely hysterical on anything uh, nuclear like you know power they, new zealand just outlawed everything nuclear ap apart from like radiology medicine <laughs> they outlawed power they outlawed weapons uh, they outlawed sort of everything just just to be safe back in the 80s and that's that's still very deep-seated germany of course completely irrational when it comes to i mean they they went back to coal pretty much instead of nuclear power no question um they they made some honestly uninformed decisions based on fukushima that i mean japan did stop all the nuclear reactors but not to decommission them they did it to actually uh, improve the safety and reliability of this uh, which they've been doing for 10 years they're upgrading all of their reactors and they will come back online um, i always find it's remarkable that other countries actually freaked out more than japan and reacted more than japan to a disaster that happened in japan but this case as well this is going to be a big deal um and I, i'm sure there's going to be a lot of um 
it's going to be hard to get the real sort of information. Uh, and, but in these cases, you can only trust the, 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 the government scientists who, you know, you have to believe um, as a resident that these are people who are civil servants whose jobs are to consider what's safe for their own kids and for, you know, their own communities that they live in and they, that they support. So we'll see. I don't know if, uh, how safe this is going to be. They do say that it does meet the IAEA standards and the water is going to be treated, proved, treated uh, appropriately before it's released. But they are going to release a lot. Like the the volume, do they say on here? It's pretty crazy and there's going to be a lot of talk about this. I mean, every day they are producing. So you imagine this. They're producing 140 tons of contaminated water every day for, for 10 years. Um, so the the number it's it's like a it's like a quadrillion tons or some ridiculous amount that they're planning to release. So it, it's going to be a big deal. Um, South Korea, of course, is freaking out, but honestly, they've been freaking out at everything, and they're on the other side, right? <laughs> but yeah, um, but that said, it'll be interesting to see. Um, uh, the water is used to cool molten nuclear fuel, uh, and it's mixing with rainwater and groundwater. Uh, and this is the problem right now, is that sitting on site, it's leaking into groundwater. So, you know, they, 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 again, lesser of evils, they're thinking of putting it into the ocean. But we're going to find out. This is going to be another big topic in coming weeks. And who knows, it could actually affect, um, it could be used as another excuse to affect the Olympics. Um, so um, we'll, we'll see. But that's that's a big decision that the government just made this week, that they're going to do this, they're going to release this. So that's a thing. <laughs> 